Hello everyone and welcome back to A Swift Look. I'm Zoe and today we're going to be talking about Kim Kardashian finally breaking her silence, well, sort of, on the new Taylor Swift song, Travis Kelsey learning something new about his girlfriend and a little discussion about whether or not we will see a tortured poets department era on the era's tour. But let's get right into it, starting off with one Miss Kim Kardashian. We talked yesterday about how she went on to Jimmy Kimmel. She said her life was good, but there was no questions about Taylor. There was no mention of Taylor. It was very much just sort of a, it was a media situation. Her just talking about her own stuff. Um, it was definitely intentional, the timing, but I think it was probably smart for her to not bring up Taylor and the song in a very public setting in a very, very public forum. However, we now know through sources how Kim feels, really feels about the Taylor song. So a source told people, and I tend to agree with people or I tend, I tend to trust people definitely more than some other publications, but as always take everything with a grain of salt. But this is what a source told people of Kim's response to the Thank You, Amy song. She's over it and thinks Taylor should move on. She doesn't get why Taylor keeps harping on it. It's been literally years. Okay, well, lots to unpack here. First of all, it's a little bit ironic for Kim to be telling Taylor to move on from this situation when all of this was started because of something that Kim Kardashian did because she couldn't move on or she couldn't handle the idea of people thinking of her ex-husband, Kanye West, in a negative light. This all, we, we wouldn't be in this situation to begin with if it wasn't for Kim releasing the phone call, editing the phone call and releasing it when she did. So it's a little, it's a little rich for her to be saying something like that. And also the part of her not understanding why she's still harping on it because it's been years. Now, listen, we all know how important it, it is to let go of grudges, to move on from situations, right? People say like, if you hold on to a grudge, it's like drinking poison and hoping it kills the other person. It only ever ends up affecting you. However, I think we can all think about somebody in our lives that screwed us over, that did us wrong, that was mean to us, that just, they just didn't, they did something to really hurt us. And it could have been when we were 10, 15, 25, it doesn't matter. You still, you still have that thing that you just kind of can't move on from. And this is that for Taylor Swift, 150%, especially considering the fact that her history with Kanye obviously goes so much longer or so much you know, further back in time. And she forgave Kanye West for publicly humiliating her on the VMA stage. And then he sort of betrays her all, all over again. So I can understand Taylor feeling, still feeling frustration and, and anger and resentment and all those emotions towards Kim, especially also considering the fact that her career really did take a shift when all that happened. Now, you could argue that it actually ended up working out very well for Taylor. And I think she herself and the song basically says, I would not be where I am today if it wasn't for what happened back then. But it doesn't mean that it wasn't really a painful, difficult situation for her. So I think it's it's slightly ironic for, for Kim to be judging Taylor for still being upset about it. Um, but anyway, I would love to know what you guys think of Kim's response in the comments and let me know if, if you think she's valid in her response or if you think that maybe she should have a little bit of self-awareness. Um, we also know that Kim has lost over 100,000 followers on Instagram following the release of the song. The question that I have is that who is, who is following Kim Kardashian right now, like in this year, that decided to unfollow her after this song. Like, why didn't you unfollow her years and years ago? It's funny to me that like this was the breaking point for people to want to unfollow Kim. It doesn't really quite make sense to me. And also Kim Kardashian has millions and millions and millions and millions of followers. I don't think she really cares about losing 100,000, but it is kind of funny. It was interesting though too. She did post a photo earlier this week with Carly Kloss, 
who famously ex best friend of Taylor Swift. Was it intentional? Was it pointed? I would guess probably maybe yes, but who knows? Who knows? Was interesting though. But that's that for the Kim Kardashian roundup of of the day. Let's move on to Travis, who is back on his podcast and back talking about Taylor, sharing his just tiny little insights about Taylor Swift. And they had they had a guest on their podcast today, um, the comedian Andrew Santino, who was talking about how he did an episode of Punked. He was one of the hosts of Punked, and he did an episode with Justin Bieber when they punked Taylor Swift. This was, I think, back like 2009. This was a long, long, long time ago. And Andrew is like telling the story about how they decided to punk Taylor and how it all went down. And Travis said, like, oh, I, I'm gonna need to talk to Taylor about this. Like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need to ask her how this went, which makes me wonder because we know as Taylor Swift fans, I certainly know, and maybe others know that Taylor and Justin Bieber don't have a very good relationship. Like post this punked episode, they have had kind of a rocky time. They've there's definitely like, especially the scooter brawn situation. Um, I don't know that they're very close. And I wonder if, if Travis knows that about Taylor and Justin. I kind of think he would know that, but also maybe he doesn't. So I'd be curious to know like if he does, if he did go home to her after the podcast taping and like brought it up, was Taylor just like, I don't want to talk about Justin Bieber (laughs) or how did that go down? I don't know. And I, and I do wonder how much Travis knows about like Taylor's past and Taylor's past as it pertains to other celebrities and stuff. Like I think a lot of people commented early on in Taylor and Travis's relationship. Travis was wearing a John Mayer t-shirt on his podcast and people were like, oh, well, this is a sign that they're not really dating because why would he be wearing a John Mayer shirt? But I honestly think it's just because Travis doesn't really know about the Taylor and John Mayer lore or he didn't at the time. And so I just, it just makes me think, does, does, is Travis aware of all these things? Like, does he know about the Carly Kloss of it all? Is he aware of maybe Taylor's past riffs or um, feuds is a strong word, but just the celebrities that she doesn't always get along with the best. But what, what, We'll have to see on that. He also kind of slyly revealed that he watches Hallmark movies with Taylor, which just makes me laugh because we already know that they watch Love is Blind together or that that they watch that together. And now they're watching Hallmark movies together. And it's just, it's just funny to think about Taylor Swift watching Hallmark movies. We all do it, but it's just crazy to think that someone as powerful, as famous as Taylor is just lounging on the couch on a weekend, scrolling Hallmark channel and, and watching videos. So That is very funny. The last thing I wanted to go over is whether or not we think there's going to be a Tortured Poets Department era during the era's tour, because I personally go back and forth. There's a part of me that feels like she intentionally released this album in April ahead of the, I guess you could say maybe, I don't even know what leg of the tour this is. Third leg, fourth leg, if you count like North America, South America, Asia, now we're heading into Europe. She still has nine months left of the tour or something, eight months, I don't know, a long time left. And there's a part of me that feels like she re- she intentionally released this album when she did because she actually has no intention of touring this album, that she, she doesn't really want to tour this album and she's okay with not including it in the era's tour because it it was just something she needed to put out, she wanted to work on and put out for the world, but she doesn't feel this need to like, oh, now I have to create a separate era of the tour to perform it. I personally think she's going to perform these songs as surprise songs throughout the tour. It makes sense. She's always looking for new songs to perform for her surprise songs. And a lot of these songs, because they're not super high tempo, some of them are, but a lot of them are not, or they can be performed on the piano, guitar, they, it like works well to be performed as a um, as a surprise song. I guess it wouldn't shock me if maybe she like rearranges the set a little bit and maybe takes out a couple songs from like Evermore or a couple songs from Folklore. Like she kind of tweaks a set ever so slightly to maybe include a little separate Torture Poets Department era where she performs like three songs or something consistently. I don't know, but I'd be curious to know what you guys think. And if you think she's going to add like a distinct era of the tour, or is it just going to be 
surprise songs. I lean towards just surprise songs, but with Taylor, we truly never know. Um, she might end up performing for four hours on stage. Like, I, I honestly, I wouldn't put it past her. All right, guys, that is it for today's show. As always, if you love Taylor Swift and love talking about her music and rankings and hot takes, all that good stuff, please subscribe to our channel, follow us on social media, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.